Hey everyone, welcome to my channel, the Ultra Graphics Guy. Today we're going to be diving into a full tutorial on how to set up your MetaQuest 3 with virtual desktop. Whether you're new to VR or a seasoned pro, it's okay, I got you covered today. We're going to be going through the step-by-step -step setup, explore all, all the options, break down the bit rates, the codecs, compare Steam VR with VDXR, even talk about the best routers to make this work flawlessly. Stick around till the end because I do have a few pro tips I can share to optimize your setup. If you find this helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon so you don't miss more VR content. Uh, let's get this started. Okay, so before we jump in, let's make sure you've got everything ready. Here's what you'll need. Number one, a MetaQuest 3 headset. Number two, a VR-ready PC with a decent GPU like an NVIDIA GTX 1070 or better. And for AMD, a RX 580 or better. I would recommend at least on my side here personally, at least a RTX 3060 or higher uh, if you want to push Quest 3's uh, higher resolutions. Number three, a solid Wi-Fi router. More on that later. Number four, the virtual desktop app installed on your Quest 3, which costs about $20 US from the Meta Store. Number five, the last thing you'll need is the free virtual desktop streamer app on your PC. It's downloadable from the vrdesktop.net website. You'll see it's on the left side. If you just scroll down just a bit, you'll see the streamer app with the Windows icon. You just press on that, download it, and install the application. Got all that? Great. So let's move on to the setup. Okay, so when you have the virtual desktop streamer app installed properly, uh, you just open it up. You'll go underneath accounts. You'll see there's going to be a meta usernames section there. Just write your username right below there. So when that's completed, you just basically press on save and let's go to the Quest 3. Okay, so right now you just want to open up your virtual desktop app on the Quest 3 itself. So let's open this up. Okay, so basically when it's opened up, you should see your computer in the computer section. Uh, if you're connected properly locally, it should open up. So press on it, connect. So when you're connected, you should see your desktop open up. It should be the same thing as on your monitor. Now, also, you can also have your keyboard pass through here if you'd like. Uh, if you just want to use your Quest 3 as your main monitor, that's possible. So now uh, what I want you to do is press on the menu button on your left controller, and it should open up the apps menu for the virtual desktop. If you go into environments, you can select any environments you'd like. Uh, you could also do a pass through mode if on there. Uh, if you open up settings, uh, that's for desktops and streaming is for your VR streaming. Uh, we'll go in all those settings later. So right now, let's go back to the PC. I'll explain a few more things. Okay, so back on the computer here, you should still have virtual desktop streamer app opened up. I want you to go to options. Now in options, you're going to get preferred codec and open XR runtime. So those two settings are like the most important settings for your whole experience. It will give you overall uh, better image quality if you go with a higher codec. Now, I would say choose between H.264 and HEVC. If you go higher than that, it will take overall more processing for your computer to accomplish. So you could be affected by more stuttering and lower FPS. If you do have a 4090 and the game is not like taking too much for, out of your computer, you can up it to AV1, you'll get less artifacts overall, the better image quality. Now you can make your research on what bit rate you would prefer, but H.264 will give you overall like less latency, uh, overall faster um, process here. So it will take less from your computer, but you will get more artifacts and dark scenes and more of a pixelated image. Uh, H.264 Plus will give you overall better colors and I would say like less pixelated dark scenes. But yeah, with H.264 though, you can up your bitrate a bit higher than uh, the other settings here. 
With HEVC, I would say that's overall the best option. It takes, I would say, less processing than H.264 at the same bit rate. Now you can lower the HEV, uh, HEVC bit rate and you'll get about the same image as the H.264 for a lesser bit rate. Now you can up the bit rate from HEVC and get a way better image. Uh, AV1, um, I would say it's a bit the same thing as HEVC, just overall better, but it takes overall higher process. Now, virtual desktop right now does have a bug uh, with RTX graphic cards, I believe. If you go over 150 megabits per second for your bit rate, uh, it could stutter and cause lower FPS. Now, so for OpenXR runtime, you're going to get two options, Steam VR and VDXR. You can go with automatic, but I'd say pick one of the two uh, in which one you would prefer. Now, some games won't work properly with VDXR, so you, you will need to run it through Steam VR. Uh, but with Steam VR, if you do have it installed, you should already know what it is. Uh, it's basically its own process, its own dashboard to run your own Steam games through. Uh, you can run like other application like FPS VR to see what's your what's going on with your computer while you're using the game. Now, virtual desktop has its own options. I'll show you that afterwards. Uh, but VDXR is basically just an open XR runtime just by itself running in the background from virtual desktop so you don't have any more processes. So you don't have SteamVR taking up some CPU percentage, uh, stuff like that. Um, so the other settings you're gonna get in here, uh, you'll see allow remote connections. That basically will give you the option to connect remotely. So if you're not home, you can connect to your desktop remotely. Uh, yes, you'll have higher delay. Uh, it's worth a try. I do play 2D games at times uh, outside the house, and it works fine. Um, you can also uh, see here you're going to get autom automatically adjust bit rate. Now, that setting, I usually turn it off for myself because I do have a decent router and usually the bit rate is staying steady. It's not changing all over the place and uh, the connection overall is good. Now, if you want it on, it will change your bit rate. So let's say if you set it at 200, uh, sometimes you'll see it go as low as 50, 100, and it will come back up at times. Now that will affect your image quality. Uh, you will see it will get blurrier and come clearer depending on your Wi-Fi connection. Um, now you can also set up a uh, boost game priority. So if you read here, it's only enabled if experience game freezes. Uh, yeah, only enable if you do experience game freezes. Uh, increases the GPU priority of games, basically. So it's basically uh, if you prioritize your game through Windows, it will do about the same thing. Um, but uh, yeah, that's it here for these options. Okay, so let's speak about routers. Uh, right now in front of me, I do have the TP-Link AX5400. You can find it underneath AXE75. Um, it's on Amazon for about $100 US, $159.97. I use this one because it's overall the easiest one to set up. Uh, you just set it up through the app and set up your own bands here. Make sure you don't have band steering on. So just the automatic SSID here that will choose if you uh, if your device wants uh, basically 2.4, 5 gigahertz or 6 gigahertz, make sure it's dedicated uh, to each one uh, or just set it up as uh, basically 5 gigahertz or 6 gigahertz. I just set up mine as VR gaming, 5 gigahertz. And I have another one for 6 gigahertz, uh, depending in which mood I am on that day. Um, but uh, yeah, no, uh, make sure you also have a dedicated router just for your VR experience. If you can't afford it, just make sure you don't have much things running at the same time and please have the router close as close as possible from where you're going to play. Um, best overall Wi-Fi connection will give you overall the best bandwidth. Um, now I want you to connect your connect yeah I want you to connect your computer uh, directly to this router. Um, now you can choose any of the LAN ports, but LAN one will take overall the priority on there. And uh, 
from your ISP or the other router you have, your main router, just connect it in the WAN and it should work. Um, it's that easy. It should start working right away when you connect your VR to the Wi-Fi and your computer will use um, this router to send out the connection overall to your VR. Um, but yeah, no, that's basically it. Uh, if you do want to see a full list uh, of the best routers available, it is on this Discord for virtual desktop. And uh, I'll put it here on the screen really fast so you can see what it is. And uh, yeah, no, that's basically it. Uh, that's how you set up your router. Um, all routers are different, so I'm not going to go through a full tutorial on how to set up the router itself. Uh, if you want a tutorial for this one, there's a bunch on YouTube. But uh, yeah, no, no, let's basically go to the next uh, thing here. Okay, so back on the Quest 3 through virtual desktop. Now, if you go to settings, that's mostly for your environment quality and desktop. That's if you're playing like 2D games or like watching movies, stuff like that. Uh, in environment quality, you can set it to low, medium or high. That will help you out overall with the frame rate. If you're trying to record like I am right now, I usually set it to low. Uh, frame rate, 72, 80, 90 and 120 FPS. It depends on what your monitor supports. And you can also set up the virtual um, like desktop monitor. It comes automatically with the virtual desktop app on your computer. So if you do turn off your main monitor or unplug it or anything like that, you don't need a, like a dummy HDMI uh, to run the whole thing. It runs by itself. Desktop bit rate. That's just overall for the image quality of your desktop. You can set it to low here, uh, four megabits per second if you're just trying to uh, play video uh, VR games on your computer. Uh, next thing here, you're gonna see advanced options. One of pro tips here, uh, if you do record any gameplay, boost your clock rates here, it will help a lot. Uh, sometimes you'll see like artifacts glitching when you record through virtual desktop with the Quest 3. Um, next thing here, I want you to go to streaming. Okay, so here in streaming, you're going to get VR graphics quality, VR frame rate, VR bit rate, and space warp. Now those four settings are going to affect overall your resolution, image quality, and your frame rate. Now let's start with VR frame rate here. It's 72 FPS, 80 90 and 120 FPS. That's the four options you can choose. Now, it all depends on what game you play, what GPU you have, what CPU you have. So, if, for example, if you have trouble reaching 120 FPS and you actually want to play at that FPS, you could always use Space Warp. What Space Warp does, it basically cuts your FPS to half. So for example, for 120, and we'll cut it to 60 and try to double it. So basically it just creates a buffer for your frame rate. Yes, it causes a higher delay, but it works pretty well at times. Uh, if you do have it at always enable, basically what it does, it just, it's always on. Uh, it won't turn off automatic. It's only when your FPS will drop to lower than what you choose here and it will just turn on, cut your FPS to half, and try to double it. Now for VR bit rate, uh, higher bit rate will increase your image quality and latency. That's just to let you know, uh, the higher you go. So for example, if I choose 200 megabits per second, it can add sometimes up to five milliseconds of latency. Um, now, usually the sweet spot for me here, it's 150 megabits per second. Uh, I usually leave it at that. Now let's go to the most complicated part here that a lot of people get confused over. Now let's start with Potato. That's 30% of the render resolution of the Quest 3. Now just to let you know, per eye, the resolution of the Quest 3 is 2064 by 2208. Now, low will give you about 30%. Uh, but no, sorry, potato will give you 30%, low will give you 40%, medium will give it you about 50%, high 70%, ultra 80%, and godlike will give you about 100%. Um, now at 100%, it will try to render and, and do a super resolution of 30, I believe it's 3120 times 3120. Um, 
and basically will max out your thing. Now, if you don't have a RTX 4090, do not choose that. Align the setting with what GPU you have and it will work overall better. Now for me, even with a 4090, if I'm trying to run like uh, Skyrim VR with mods, I need to bring it down to ultra. Uh, if not, it doesn't work properly. I even need to turn on space warp at times to make everything work uh, on my side here. So I have a good uh, overall gameplay. Um, but yeah, no, that's basically it here for the whole settings. Uh, I'm going to go through a, for a few pro tips here. Okay, so for the last part of my video here, I just want to make sure with you that everything is working well. And I also want to show a small scenario on what could happen if you're experiencing low FPS uh, and everything seems to be working well, but it's still going on and it's stuttering and you're not sure why. Now to start off, uh, if you want to see the stats, uh, the virtual desktop stats through uh, Steam VR or when you have a game open up in VDXR, so in VR, uh, you need to press the left and right analog stick and that overlay will open up. It will show your frame rate, latency, bit rate, max bit rate, codec, runtime, headset, your Wi-Fi connection, all the delays uh, separated uh, in the list here. So the game encoding network decoding, your graphics quality, render resolution, target frame rate, video buffering, automatic bit rate, and PC Ethernet and space work. So now you want to make sure that everything is working well uh, in your stats here. If something is in the orange, like similar to my frame rate here, that means something could be going wrong uh, with the connection, my GPU, CPU, um, any of that, to be yeah, honest, on that side of things. Um, but the thing is, is that I have FPS uh, VR opened up. Like you can see here, I have 90 frames per second running, but virtual desktop's not running the same on my VR. So something is going on wrong here that could be causing a low FPS. So yeah, it usually means... <coughs> 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 So now you want to make sure that everything is working well. Uh, you'll see frame rate, latency. Those are mostly the two important ones here you want to keep looking at. Uh, if something is orange in there, that means something is off. Something's not reaching its target or desired target. For example, my target frame rate is at 90 frames per second and it's at 81. Now I have FPS VR opened up in Steam VR. Now you can see here, my FPS is at 90 frames per second. So why is it different? Now that means it's usually a software side issue, a networking issue, or just your Quest 3. So usually what I would do is reboot your Quest 3, make sure the virtual desktop app is completely closed, reboot will do that. And you wanna make sure that you're connected to your Wi-Fi properly. Now through the Quest 3, you could have a different result than when it says on here, it happens. Um, reboot your router, that will help also. And sometimes just close Steam VR, close everything, restart it, and it does a great job. Now, if it's still off, it's still not working, I would say overall, change the settings, your bitrate, play around a bit with things, uh, set it back up, and basically you'll find your sweet spot and that's all you need on your side. I would stick at it if you can. Yes, you can change your resolution back up or the FPS depending on what you want. Um, but overall, every scenario is different. So people have different builds, you can buy a different router and you'll see different results at the end of the day than what I have here. So troubleshoot around, play with your settings, and I promise you, you'll find the best performance and the best resolution for your setup. Um, but yeah, no, that's basically it for my whole video. Uh, if you have any questions, just comment uh, below. And uh, yeah, don't forget to subscribe and uh, press that bell icon. And uh, yeah, have a good rest of your day. Have a good one.